At Waters and Stanton, we are continually receiving new products. An upcoming video will feature the new and exciting LDG Z100 Plus, dedicated for the ICOM IC705. Thank you for joining me on the Waters and Stanton video channel. I've been advocating all sorts of ways of trying to get on the HF bands from small gardens. And I think it's quite important because so many of us do have small gardens, and yet the HF bands have so much to offer. And as the next uh, year or two progresses, uh, the HF bands will have even more to offer because we should be crawling up the new sunspot cycle. But it is a challenge. So what I'm going to talk about today is what I've termed the pop-up antenna. It's an antenna that pops up and then disappears again. Now this may help a lot of you that have got small gardens, can't get planning permission, those sort, of, those sort of things. And the one thing about gardens is, no matter how big or how small it is, there's no limitation on the vertical measurement. At least when I say there's no limitation, uh, there are practical limitations, but it's an area that I think is worth exploring. The vertical perspective, the third dimension, shall we call it. Yes, let's talk about the pop-up antenna. Now, a pop-up antenna that's going to make best use of a vertical third dimension space is going to have to be a vertical antenna. And for the vertical antenna, I'm going to recommend that you use a fiberglass telescopic pole. Now, there's lots of fiberglass telescopic poles about. We do the German ones from spider pole. They're heavy duty, they're a bit heavier than the normal fiberglass pole, but they will last a long time. They won't crack, they don't get affected by the weather. They're tough. I've had one now for nearly three years and had no problems at all. We regularly sell them to customers and we don't hear anything uh, from them apart from how pleased they are. If you use a cheaper fiberglass pole, yes, you'll save some money, but you'll probably find that you'll run into trouble uh, long term and you may have to buy another one. So perhaps it makes sense to buy a better one to start with. Anyway, that, it's entirely your choice. The fiberglass pole will do the job. Now, the length that I use is 12 meters. It's a bit longer than what you'd expect me to use. You might say, well, go for the 10 meter one because that gives you 40 meter vertical. Well, it does, but I like a little bit of extra height because it does mean to say that if I want a bit of extra strength at the top, I can just not use the top section. Um, and that means that the top, the new top section in other words, the second bit down, is a little bit thicker. But it's entirely up to you. The antennas that I'm going to talk about don't really have any lateral strain on the fiberglass pole at all. It's all downward. And uh, the uh, fiberglass poles are very good at uh, downward, uh, downward sort of pressure. Now let's take a look at the fiberglass pole first of all. Um, they're black. Uh, they stand around about uh, just over one metre tall. Um, they're nicely made, they telescope out very easily, and they're self-locking. All you do is you pull a section up, and you give it a little bit of a tug and perhaps a twist, and it locks in place. And then you do the same with each section. And for normal use, uh, for a vertical wire run up the side, that's fine. In the windy weather, they will unlock themselves, <laughs> and I've found that to be quite useful, that in the windy weather, um, you can, uh, it just sort of collapses itself down. If you want to make it more permanent, in other words, it's not going to pop up overnight, pop down again. Um, if you want to make it more permanent, then use a hose clamp, but you don't use the hose clamp to clamp the section to squeeze the next bit of, next section above it. Use the hose clamp on the section above, right at the base, so it stops it sliding back in. So the hose clamp doesn't have to be very tight at all, uh, just it's almost finger tight really, but that will stop the telescope mast uh, collapsing. But if you're going to use it as a true pop-up mast, pop it up, 
when you want to and then down again is dead easy and telescoping it down is, is dead easy you just grab the section bar get a little bit of a jolt it'll unlock um, and it'll come down within seconds and it only takes a minute to put up a mast which is 30 foot high or sorry 10 meters high which um, is good I, I got um, I got told off the other day by talking in uh, feet but I'm sorry um, it uh, is feet is uh, is a habit because this, when I was at school it was feet not meters so there we are apologies and if I do slip from one to that to the other well um, I hope you'll forgive me when I decided to shoot this bit of the video it started raining but I just wanted to show you that uh, the way I've strapped the fiberglass pole to my uh, veranda in the garden you'll see there's a yellow elasticated strap there um, at the top and also one lower down but I found that in windy weather that wasn't adequate so I put a rigid strap it's a sort of a red orange coloured strap there and um, that seems to hold it in place but uh, as you can see it's just whacking down with rain at the moment let's look at the first antenna that I used when I was um, preparing this video it's an infed vertical half wave for 20 meters now that vertical is 10 meters long and it's fed at the base with a transformer 49 to 1 matching transformer the antenna will also work on 10 meters because the harmonic of uh, uh, 20 meters is uh, 10 meters and so you get a dual band antenna it's something I covered uh, some while back now in a, in, in a video the great thing about this is that it's simple uh, it doesn't really require any uh, extensive radials at all you just feed it at the base with the 49 to 1 transformer and run 10 meters of wire up the, uh, the pole now I should say that all the measurements I'm giving you are approximate you will need to actually trim the antenna for the best VSWR but these are these are sort of ballpark figures now one of the things that um, I initially needed was to sort of stabilize the wire as it came down the mast I didn't want it flapping about but I didn't want to have to tape the wire because the whole essence of this pop-up system is you can pop it up and pop it down without any problems at all so what I did I got some plastic tubing and drilled a couple of holes in it as you can see examples on the screen here um, drilled a couple of holes in it and ran the wire in and out of it and that is enough to keep that plastic tube in place you put the plastic tube over the mast and it holds the wire in place and uh, perhaps a couple of tubes um, at different points down the mast is all that you need another thing I found is that when you run the wire up the mast with the mast locked in position it's sod's law that the wire will either be a little bit too long and dangle on the ground or a little bit too short and hang in the air at the feed point so what you can do is you can actually wind a couple of turns of the wire around one of these plastic formers um, and that takes up the if it's too long it takes it takes the extra up uh, in the form of a coil and uh, if it's too short then you drop the mast down one section and again add a coil to it to bring the feed point in the right position so it's quite a quite a useful tip it doesn't have any real effect on the um, resonant point of the antenna um, because you're only going to put a turn or two around it but um, as I said before you do need to fine-tune the antenna to get the precise length of wire for the band you're operating on this example is 20 meters and 10 meters now maybe you, you think well that's fine but uh, I don't really want to operate on just on 20 meters and 10 meters particularly 10 meters which is t not open that much at the moment um, well you can actually make it a dual band antenna there's two ways of doing it uh, one way I've already described in a previous video and I'll put a link to it and that's by putting um, a trap in the vertical section of the um, antenna and I made mine covering 20 meters and 17 meters and that's a convenient way of doing it and I'll put a link um, at the bottom of this video to the video that covers making that antenna the alternative way is to actually cut the vertical 
antenna at a point that gives you two bands. So if, for example, I wanted to make this antenna operate on 15 meters, then I'd run up seven and a half meters of wire, um, trim that so that it was resonant on the 15 meter band, put an insulator in there, and then a bit more wire um, above to bring the system to, to resonant on 20 meters, simply by shorting the wire across that insulator. Now, um, you'd have to make up your own way of doing that. But basically, if you cut that wire and then have a means of shorting across an insulator, then you can make that antenna resonate on 15 meters, for example, and 20 meters. It does mean to say that you've got to bring the aerial down to either switch from, 10, uh, from 15 to 20 or vice versa, but um, it's not too much of, of a problem. So that's way of making the antenna cover two bands. Now there's a, an even simpler way of going about uh, this uh, pop-up antenna, and that's to make it a quarter wave vertical. Now if you make it a quarter wave vertical, you can actually cover 40 meters. You can actually have a full size antenna on 40 meters. A quarter wave is only 10 meters tall, I say only, but you can have a full size quarter wave. Um, you will need to provide some sort of ground plane and you'll need some radials, but they can be just be laid on the ground. Now, in recent times, I think we've learnt that the radials don't have to be a quarter wave long. It's more quantity than the actual length. And it's perfectly feasible to make a ground plane using radials of no more than about three or four metres long. If you can get three or four metre radials, say about eight of them laid on the ground, you'll have quite a good ground plane and that vertical will work against those radials. And of course, if they're just laid on the ground, when you're not operating, not using the antenna, you just coil the radials up and you just telescope your vertical down. It's the pop-up antenna, it disappears. You'll see on the screen here the basic idea of a quarter wave vertical. Again, the uh, dimensions are ballpark figures. And again, if you want to, you can cut that antenna at any point you like in order to create two bands. So it will be perfectly feasible to have a, an antenna that covers 20 metres and 40 metres. All you've got to do is to either short or open circuit that break point. Of course, there can be other combinations of bands as well, but uh, 20 and 40 seem to be quite a good choice. I should add that uh, if you want to use the spider pole, as a quarter wave vertical, spider beams do a little SO239 adapter box which is on our website and fits at the base of the spider pole so you can very easily plug a PL259 into this uh, junction box and connect your vertical element to the junction box. It's a, it's a nice tidy way of doing it. And there's also provision on that box for connecting radials. That brings me to the third option that you could uh, consider. In some ways, it's probably the best option if you want to be able to operate on several bands and flip one from one band to the other. And that is to install uh, an automatic antenna tuner at the base of this whip. Now, if you have the whip extended to 30, 33 feet or whatever, it's not super critical. It's not a bad antenna to use with an automatic antenna tuner because you'll certainly get coverage on 40 um, up to 10 meters. You uh, may well find that you can operate on 80 meters. The efficiency won't be particularly great, but uh, you could operate on 80 meters. There's a number of options you can have. I mean, the, if you're using low power with the IC705, for example, you can use the matching antenna tuner that ICOM have for that transceiver, and that will match the antenna quite uh, conveniently. Uh, there's also the uh, ICOM AH4, which is designed specifically for NFED wires. That will cover uh, 80 meters through to 10 meters. Um, both these ATUs are waterproof. There are other options as well. MFJ do a range of uh, waterproof antenna tuners. The only thing I would say is that you may have to introduce a um, nine to one unun between the antenna tuner and the wire, the vertical element, if you're going to use a, an antenna tuner 
uh, like the MFJ range, which is predominantly designed for um, uh, coax feeds. So um, you may find that in order to get a decent match with the MFJ antenna tuners, that you need to have a nine to one unun as well to deal with the rather higher impedance. But um, uh, it's uh, something that you can experiment with and uh, it's certainly worth, uh, worth considering. And uh, as regards that uh, matching, I will try and cover that in a, uh, an upcoming video. Of course, this may give you some ideas for operating out of doors. Perhaps you've got a motorhome, perhaps you've got a caravan, perhaps you've got a camper van, or perhaps you just want to park up somewhere and put up a fiberglass mast and explore the possibilities of a very simple but effective antenna system. So, I hope that you've found this video informative and it will encourage you perhaps to do some experimentation and this fiberglass spider pole is certainly a very versatile bit of equipment and it can fulfill all sorts of applications but as I said at the beginning of this video it is particularly useful if you want to experiment with vertical antennas. So thanks for watching this video. I do appreciate you supporting the uh, video channel of Waters and Stanton. And don't forget, we're happy to hear from you. Whatever you want to buy or purchase, um, new equipment, used equipment, uh, give us a call, uh, go onto the website or send us an email and we'll be happy to try and um, do a deal for you. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. I hope the weather improves because at the moment it's still raining, but uh, we are still in the summertime at the time that I'm doing this video and I think there's promise of a bit of sunshine later in the month. We shall see. Take care, enjoy your home radio, speak soon.